Uh, okay, so hello everyone. Thank you, Anne Gare, for the introduction. So I'm Charlotte. I'm based in uh, Brussels, Belgium. I'm part of Devo Team G Cloud. We are a Google partner. And uh, I, you will be hearing of me uh, a lot in the coming weeks and months because I will be working closely with you uh, throughout the whole migration to Abraham's Google Workspace. So let's start this uh, kickoff. The agenda of today is here displayed on the screen. So we will start with the planning of the whole project. So this uh, migration, the switch to Abraham's workspace has a planning and it's very important that you are aware of the key milestones. Then of course, we're going to talk about your role as a key user. We will also maybe go, uh, we will also go more in detail about the file migration because as you know, you are going to change tools. So that means that we are going to migrate your files that you're currently using on MS Teams, on SharePoint, on OneDrive, etc. Um, so we need to discuss this more in detail. We'll also present the support that is available for you and for all the other users. And we will also discuss the next steps. So what we expect from you after this meeting. During the whole presentation, if at any time you have questions, concerns, please do not hesitate to just ask your question out loud or use the chat. I will gladly answer your questions. Okay, about the planning. So which tools will we adopt and what is the global timeline? I'm sure that this slide you have already seen, but it's uh, always good to have a refresher. So these are the tools. So on the screen, you have the tools that you're currently using and the tools that you will be using in the coming weeks and months. So let's start with the communication tools, the first tools of Google that you're going to adopt. So you're today using Microsoft Outlook and Microsoft to-do lists. In the future, you will be using Google Mail, so Gmail, Google Calendar, Google Tasks, Google Contacts, and Google Keep for Notes. So those are the future communication tools. Then, of course, we also have the collaboration tools, so tools that allow you to have meetings, to organize your files and folders and share them with your colleagues. Today, you're using Microsoft Teams for meetings, for chatting. In the future, you will be using Google Meet and Google Chat. For your files, folders, organizing your uh, content, you are today using SharePoint and OneDrive. In the future, you will be using Google Drive. We, uh, in the Google Workspace environment, there is also a solution for a whiteboard. So today you have a Microsoft whiteboard to do some brainstorms. We have a similar tool in Google Workspace, which is called Google Jamboard. Then uh, to create the content that you're storing on uh, SharePoint, OneDrive, etc., you are using Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote. All these tools will be replaced or in combination, you will be using Google Docs for Word, Microsoft Excel and Google Sheets for Excel, PowerPoint and Slides for PowerPoint, and OneNote will remain if needed. The business applications such as Dynamics, uh, Microsoft Finance, and Power BI will remain available. So this is about the change that is going to happen over this whole project. So these are the tools you are going to move towards to. Is this change clear for everyone? Yes. Stefan Grant, you have a question. Okay, I don't think Sorry. that was it. No, it's fine. Wrong button. Wrong button. <laughs> All good. Um, okay, so about the timeline. Um, our project is split into two important phases. The first phase is the communication phase, and the second phase is the collaboration phase. We are going today focus on the communication phase because it's the first one coming. So the communication phase during that uh, part of the project, you will be adopting the communication tool. So Gmail, Google Calendar, Google Contacts, etc. This phase is split up into three parts. First part is core IT. So your colleagues from IT teams will be migrated towards Google Workspace first. They are basically testing that the migration went well and that the tools they're using are also um, fitting their needs to make sure that the other users who will be migrated later have also a good experience. Then we have the early adopters and you are the early adopters. You are the key users. You will be migrated right after the 
core IT uh, members. So your, the day you will start using the new Google Workspace tools, the new co communication tools, will be on the 10th of April. So that is an important date for you because it's the day you will start working with the communication tools of Google. And later on, we will migrate all the users of ELG to Abraham Google Workspace. And that will happen on the 24th of April. So you will basically also be the first one to get a flavor of Google Workspace, be able to work with the tools and also give us feedback of how the migration went. Yes, Philip. I have a question because today we are, some of us are already using Gmails, uh, Sheets and whatever there is in Google. What will actually change from how we work today? Is there any change for us expected or is it just that we might already migrated at a very early stage? So your email address today is elgmetals.com, right? I have two. I have one for elgmetals.com and one for Apple. Okay. Well, you will be fully working on your apparam.com account. Mm -hmm. Okay. And okay, so for me, the change will not be that much because I'm already working in this new space. Indeed. But you won't be less impacted, let's say. Yeah, but I already have a lot of questions because I'm not familiar with the system. I never had the training. And uh, in my daily work, I'm facing some problems. Um, when can I address this one? Or is there uh, a training plan for us to, to, to better work with that one? Of course. So because you're a key user, you will get a training before everyone. The training is going to take place on the 22nd of okay. March. You will get the invitations today. And during the training, it's a two-hour training. We go through all the communication tools in detail, not yet the collaboration tool, that's for later. And then you also have plenty of time to ask your questions. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Maybe maybe as a distance a lot, um, Philip, you will see all your old emails in Gmail as well during that day. So we will transfer all the emails and data currently in Outlook also to Gmail. So this will be present at that date. And you will receive your new emails directly in Outlook. Um, the calendar will be uh, there. Um, new emails will arrive directly in Outlook. So this will be the main change for you, which is not the case today. Thank you, Ansgar. Uh, will, our, will our calendar history be transferred? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So 10, uh, 10 of April for key users, 24 of April for all the other users, and then we will start the collaboration phase of the project. We're not going to go too much in detail about the collaboration phase, but what is important here is the green block that you see on the screen, analysis workshops. So even though we are still uh, in the communication phase of the project, we are already going to come to you to prepare the collaboration phase. And that's why we need the key users because of course files, we cannot migrate them just like that from uh, the Microsoft environment to Google. We really need to understand how you're working today, how you would like your files to be migrated. So that's why we need also key users to understand your way of working and the best way to migrate your content. So those analysis workshops, they will already take place as soon as we can. So in the coming weeks, so that uh, we are prepared very early um, with the collaboration phase. Okay, for everyone? Okay. About your role. So we're going to discuss what does it mean to be a key user and what is expected from you. First of all, uh, Ansgar already said it. Thank you for uh, being here, taking the time to join this kickoff, but also to take on that role of key user. It is a very important role and I will give more detail about it just in a minute. But first of all, thank you for um, yeah, investing yourself in this project as a key user. This is very important to us. About the role, what does it mean to be a key user? Well, first of all, know that you will be migrated to the Google Workspace first. So you will be the first one to have access to Apparam's Google for, uh, Workspace and then all the other users. You will also be trained first. So as I said, your training is already scheduled on the 22nd of March and you will all receive the invitation right after this meeting. During uh, the whole process, since you're going to experience everything first, communication, 
training, etc. We are very eager and all ears to hear everything you have to say to us. So if you have an experience that is bad or good, we would like to hear your feedback. So we will be asking you to give us feedback about communication, about training, and also about the migration, how you, how you have experienced it. We uh, might also ask you, if needed, uh, to remind your teams or close colleagues to um, participate in the training session. So if we notice that our training sessions are not filled up with enough people or that people don't join, well, we might ask you to remind your close colleagues and teams to participate in the trainings and also to inform them about the support, support material that is available for them. Because we really want to make sure that they are aware that there is support material created for them, for everyone, and that they should make use of it. We're going to leverage also on you to uh, lead uh, your colleagues, your close colleagues or team members on adopting uh, the Google Workspace tools. What does it mean? Well, we all know that when uh, we are changing tools, when we have to learn and discover how to use a new tool, sometimes it can be um, yeah, a challenge for some people and that's all fine. And you might hear some colleagues that have a hard time sending an email, organizing their files. Well, we expect them to come to you that you can help them with easy questions. Of course, we're not expecting you to become IT support or anything, just answer basic questions and help them as a first line, let's say. And then of course, we already said it in the previous slide, we uh, will be inviting you to an analysis workshop to understand how you're working today with files and how you're organizing them so that we can prepare in the best way uh, the file migration. So, all the um, tasks, actions that we uh, are asking from you will require uh, one day and a half of your time during the communication phase and approximately two days of your time during the collaboration phase so that you understand that over the course of three, mo uh, three months, how much time this will uh, take from you. Are there any questions about the what is expected from you and also the workload estimation here displayed on the screen. Okay, so I guess it's clear. Everything that we would like you to do uh, or for which we need your help is listed in a spreadsheet. I'm going to display the spreadsheet on my screen. So how is this spreadsheet built? First of all, at the bottom of the screen, as you can see, there are different tabs. So each region has its own tab. If, we, if you're from Canada or America, you should go uh, navigate to this tab. If you're from Germany, France, South Africa, you should go to the EMEA tab. Each tab is the same. It's only that if you're part of one region, your name will appear in that specific region and not in another region. In column A, you will find the tasks or actions that we expect you to do. In column B, you have the description of the task and column C, you have the deadline. For instance, the first task was to participate in the key users kickoff. Everybody that is available that uh, joined today the meeting can scroll through the sheet to find his or her name and then mark it as done. So we can keep track of the task that we are asking you to do. It's not to control you, but it's to make sure that our information towards you reaches you and that you also take the time to perform your key users tasks or actions, of course. The next task is, for instance, test your Apparam Google account, which is important for us to be sure that you have access to your account and that it's working. You see, this is also to detect any issues. We are also asking you to uh, join uh, Google communication training and some tasks are even optional. As I said, if we need you to promote a training, we will tell you, but this is for the moment just optional. It's only if we need your help. Is this sheet clear for everyone? Of course, we will share all the material with you right after the training. Huh? So you will receive an email from us with all the links and you will just have a bundle of everything in one email. Yes, Magali. Hi. Some of them, uh, some of us has already a Peram email account, so uh, we can 
switch to the next step if it's the case. How does it work? Because uh, for, for my case, I already have an Opera, um, uh, an Opera email account and I already use uh, Google Sheet and so on. So, yeah. so we, what are you talking about? How, how does it mean? Yeah, how I can answer work? that question for you. Um, um, of course, you currently log in with your appram.com address. This is not the case for all of the employees. Now, we've identified platform users uh, who will keep the appram.com address, but all the other um, employees or colleagues will um, still have their ELG email address in place. So the login switches, um, I don't know if it's uh, in your case, I have to look it up, but for some people, the login switches from appram.com to the email uh, ELG email address. That's one point. The second one is that we switch from the username password to log in with the current window credentials to single sign-on. And we would like to have that tested in any case. Uh, so uh, currently using it as a, it's not a kind of workaround, but it's, um, we set it up and you have username password separated to, you, to your ELG environment at the moment. You want to change that and give you the more comfort on the thing that you can say you can log in with single sign-on uh, to your Google account as well. And that should be tested at the end. That's why we do the test for everybody, also for the people who already have an account. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. David, you're on mute. <laughs> okay, so two things. Um, Ansgar, thank you. I did use the this, this single sign on this morning. So that was, if that's already in place, that's great. I don't know if it's going to be modified or what, but it is, but it is there. Um, also, uh, Charlotte, this, is this going to be shared? So it'll be a, a, a living document that we will be, okay. All right. Cool. Thank you very much. Yes, you will all be editors and you all have each a, con a column in this uh, document and you can adapt then your column. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Um, at the bottom of the sheet, you also have two other tabs. You have here a tab with contacts. These are interesting email addresses to keep close. So we have here the email address of the support mailbox, my Aperam email address, and also Ansgar's email address. So if you need uh, any support, if you can find an information, we are also available through email. And there is a last tab that we create uh, just in case if you have a question that you would like to ask in this document, you can also do it uh, here, but there are plenty of other ways to contact us to ask questions. Okay, let's go back to our presentation. Okay, so about the file migrations. As you know, uh, we're going to organize um, analysis workshops. What are we going to gather as information during those workshops? Here you have the information on the screen. So our goal is to understand how your files are structured. Do you have folders, subfolders? Are there different permissions? Are there any private challenge, uh, channels? Where are they currently located on SharePoint, in your OneDrive, etc. We also need to define the complexity of your files because you probably have uh, Excel files with macros or Excel files that are, linked, that are linked to each other or that are oversized. All that information we need to know. And we would like also to understand what is your ideal file structure for the future. Are there files you want to archive? Are there files you don't want to migrate? Are there folders you want to merge, etc.? That is all possible. So this is all what we are going to ask to you during the workshop. So you don't have to prepare. It's not a test of a, or an examination. This is really for us to understand how you're working. If you want to invite colleagues that might be uh, interesting during those workshops, please do. Uh, we do understand that some people just started or uh, that have changed teams, so don't have always the whole knowledge of their department. So uh, if you have colleagues that could be interesting in those workshops, you can definitely invite them as well. Magali? Yes, again, me. That's um, okay. Do we have to know all the, the different structure and all the different way we work? I mean, every employee have different way uh, of working. So we have to collect all the way of working to know them, to uh, fill the, the structure. We are talking only about uh, shared files, not the files that are on their OneDrive. Only the content that is shared in your department or your team. Yes, but uh, what is the definition of shared? Because uh, it can be very large or, you know. Yes, so, so we will prepare. Um, so we have a list of what is existing today and we will already be able to organize, okay, this is 
this belongs to that person, that belongs to another person, and then organize the workshops. And I think Ansgar was going to say something. Yeah, I just want to add an example. No? For, um, you created a team in Microsoft Teams, and you have a, a files tab in Teams. This is normally uh, where files are located on SharePoint in the background, mm. and you work with some people on it. Um, there is no dedicated application like Teams in the Google environment. So for chatting, we will use Google Space. For the files, we will use a shared drive. For um, other things, we will use sites or other services. And this is exactly uh, where we need the knowledge how you work. What does make sense? Uh, does it make sense to create this shared drive and you will st um, keep working on, on shared documents and so on? Is the structure OK? Would you uh, change something or not? Um, and where would we store data you have in Teams? Okay. Um, I understand. This is mostly the case. It, it, file it, server, it, everything that's located locally will stay there as it is. We don't touch file servers on this project. OK, I understand. But it's huge to collect all this information, to know you know, what we want what we want to share, what we have to share, and so on. Uh, I'm, I'm just a, I have just a concern a bit uh, regarding the delay of uh, collecting all this data to to be able to, to understand the, the structure and uh, you know, we discussed it already because this is a challenge we have at the moment as well. No? So um, we, we think about how we can best deal with it, um, um, send out some emails before, um, make them thoughts about it, have the workshop afterwards to discuss the findings of the emails and so on. So what is the best way to, to get those information? Because doing it in a workshop alone in one hour would not be enough. And that's um, not the goal, huh? That's correct. Just... So that's, um, and we have 200 different team owners with, I don't know, 700 different teams in our environment um, where files are stored differently and so on. So this is quite a challenge. You're definitely right. And we're trying to figure out the best way how to deal with it. Yeah. But we have already done it in the past. So it is possible. We know that it's not in one hour workshop that we will find a final solution. We know that we will have to meet up a couple of times and organize different sessions. Um, okay, about support. So where can you find support and what is the support flow for this project? So we have created different type of support, different ways of getting support. First of all, you have an internet page that is available with news about the project, with important information about the project. For instance, what changes, what happens during the migration, what, how should you prepare, etc. That is all available on the internet. There are also um, service now, um, Q and A's uh, that are available. Uh, so there again, you can find uh, directly answers to specific questions. We also created a Google chat space, which we call the key user community. So once you have logged in on your uh, Aperam Google account, you will have access to the applications of Google and you will have access to the uh, chat space we created. It's a basic chat, uh, the same way you're using Teams. It's a place where you can chat, share documents, etc. And that's uh, where we will be available to answer your questions uh, directly. So I will be um, available to answer your questions through that uh, community and Ansgar as well. Of course, you're only getting access to your Google account on Monday, Monday 13th, so next week, Monday. And it's uh, as of that day that you then uh, can access that uh, Google chat space. Also, we have a support mailbox, so we already showed it to you, so it's Google migration. Um, what you should remember is that in this presentation, all the icons here are clickable. So if you want to access the internet, just click on the icon. If you want to access, access the chat, same, you click here. And if you want to send an email to our support mailbox, Google migration.ar at aparam.com, you can also click here. So these are uh, different ways you have to get support, but also to find support. Okay. Next slide. Um, so as you know, you're the key users. We told you that uh, your colleagues, your team might ask you some questions the day they start using the Google tools. Uh, of course, we don't expect you to solve issues. What we expect from you is to help them if they are um, they don't know, for example, how to send an email, how to uh, create a new document, etc. So what happens if somebody doesn't know how to perform a task or an action? First of all, we are going to tell those people to check the internet page. That should be the first reflex, always check the internet page and also the FAQs on ServiceNow. 
then of course you will be uh, the second line of support. Let's say you will be answering uh, their questions if they can't find information on the intranet page. And if it's a task or an action you don't know how to perform, and that is all okay, it's also new for you, you, you can't know everything, you can um, ask the person that is requesting for help uh, to send us an email via the support mailbox. Now, if somebody is having an issue with a tool, so if you are uh, trying to perform a basic action and the tool is preventing you to do that action or you are experiencing a migration issue, well, uh, this can go uh, directly uh, via email to the support mailbox for really issues that you might experience uh, that is not a functional issue, but really a technical issue. You can send directly emails to us and we will gladly help um, you further with your request. Okay, then about the next steps. So what are the next steps for you as a key user? On Monday, as we said, you will receive access to your new abraham.com account. So we ask you to test uh, your account to make sure that you can log in and that it's working. So that will be possible on Monday. Um, after you have logged in, please make sure that you have access to the key users community in Google Chat. So that uh, starting on Monday, whenever you have a question, you can use the community and have a rapid answer. Don't forget also to attend the Google communication training on Wednesday, 22nd of March. Also, uh, go check your key user toolbox. So that was a spreadsheet I uh, showed uh, a while. Um, so in that, um, in that toolbox, you will find everything that is expected from you and you can really easily follow up on your task. And as soon as it is possible, uh, when we will be ready, we will share with you a link so that you can uh, sign up for an analysis workshop. Okay. Everything that was explained today will be shared with you via email. So the uh, deck that is presented here will be shared with you. The toolbox will be shared with you and also the recording of the session. So you will have all the keys to be a great key user. Are there any questions? Is everybody comfortable with what needs to happen? Okay, well, thank you for your time and thank you for attending. Yeah, looking forward to working with you. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs> See you soon. Thank you. Thank you Bye. You thank, too. You. Bye. thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you.